When you buy a smartphone, every one of them is going to have some amount of pre-installed software on there. Now, there's always been this debate about how much is too much. When do you start moving from useful pre-installed software into the world of blow? And Samsung, for a lot of people, have been on the wrong side of that metric. And I think that is something that in people's minds maybe has not changed, but maybe it should be changing. Now, I'm not speaking about some of their cheaper phones because some of them do indeed still have some bloat on them. I'm speaking more about their premium devices. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the pre-installed applications and things you can do on your Samsung Galaxy device. Although there is one caveat because one of these is something you're gonna have to go to the store to download, but it is absolutely worth it. So let's start things off with one that a lot of people are still just not using and they should be. If you have a Windows PC, you're an Android user and your computer uses Windows, you should be using this app. It is called PhoneLink and it is pre-installed on your phone. So let's jump to the overhead camera here and I'll show you exactly what to do. So it may be already in your quick settings here. If it isn't, you can hit the uh, edit button, which I believe is maybe up here, edit buttons, and you can find it in here and drag it down. Mine is already on here, so I'm just gonna roll on. So it might say link to Windows or something like that. That's the name of my computer. So we're gonna long press on that, and this is how we can set this up. You'll see an option here to add a computer. Now on your computer, you're gonna have to actually install the, the uh, accompanying program, which is of course very easy. Just go to the Microsoft Store, search for phone link and install it. At this point, just follow the instructions as you go through this process. It's very, very simple, and you will have this app installed. Once that is done, this is what you're going to have. Now a lot of this at this point is going to be blurred because these are my private text messages, which I have no intention on sharing showing you, but that is one really cool feature. You can now text directly from your computer. If you're like me, you have two monitors, one monitor is probably showing uh, this phone link app or Discord or something like that to talk to your friends anyway. So having this up is really, really convenient to just be able to, to you know, triage your, your notifications, which are all going to come in right here from any application, send and receive text messages here in this blurred area. It's really, really convenient. You can actually use Bluetooth to make phone calls from your computer as well, which is really, really cool. But a great feature is the ability to stream apps from your phone to your computer. So let's grab an application here real quick. We'll just do the Play Store. Double click on that and you will see this window pop up. And there's the Google Play Store. And this isn't a movable window, a resizable window. Whatever you want to do with this, it's going to work just fine with your scroll wheel. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff. You can see here a text message that just came through, which I'm sure my wife uh, did not mean to type out this message. I'm sure there's a typo in there somewhere. But you can do this floating window thing with any app and it is really, really useful. You can also just click on your phone up here and just stream your phone screen itself and do whatever you want to do from here. Now the rest of this video, I'm going to be utilizing that to capture the screen. Anytime you see me capturing a screen while I'm talking, this is what I'm using. It's awesome. So from there, let's look at app number two, and this is the one that you're going to have to actually go and install yourself. Let's jump back over to the little picture in picture thing here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the Galaxy Store, which I think, no, I don't have in a folder. I have it down here, the Galaxy Store. And once you're in the Galaxy Store, you're gonna go and search for Good Lock. I've talked about Good Lock a million times on this channel. I'll talk about it more. It's really, really good. Let's open it up, make sure that it's installed. And when you open it, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a whole bunch of modules that you're going to need to actually go in and install. Like let's go to one that I don't have installed. Just see your theme park. If I click on that, it's gonna take me to the Galaxy Store to install this module. I'm not gonna go through all of these because frankly, there are just too many to go through, but I will go through a couple of my favorites. So Multistar is an absolute must have. There are a ton of options to use with your foldable device. If you're a Z Fold user, there's options for Dex, Multi-Window, there's just a ton of really good things in Multistar. I've accidentally closed the entire program. Let's go back in there. Registar is a cool one. It gives you the ability to use your power button to not trigger Bixby, but to trigger the Google Assistant. That is really useful for me. What about Sound Assistant? You wanna be able to have really granular control over the audio on your device. Do you wanna be able to have individual app volume adjust the volume of a particular app 
on its own so everything else can be louder or quieter than you want it to be. Well, that's another really, really useful one. Lock Star. This is a really cool one as well. You can go in and customize your lock screen. This is some stuff that maybe we've been seeing Apple kind of do. Well, you can do really similar stuff on your Samsung device with Lock Star. You can see what mine looks like there. Calendar, some cool stuff going on. And then if I double tap to wake it, you'll see that my clock, I believe, is a little bit different. Some cool stuff going on there. And it is very, very customizable. You can move things around, do whatever you want to do. And I could go on and on. There's stuff for your pin. There's there's just, there's a ton of stuff. Go download Good Luck, play around with it. It's an awesome app and it is made by Samsung. A lot of stuff you might see in Good Luck will later on be official baked in features of your devices. This next one has more to do with customizing your phone and it's one that I really, really like. I'm not sure if it's available on every phone yet, but it should be coming to more and more devices over time. It's the ability to not just have a widget, but to have a widget stacked on top of another widget that you can then cycle through. It's really, really cool. So let's go to a blank screen here, which I'm gonna have to create. And let's go ahead and try to add a widget. So let's pick something basic here. Let's do this one here from Google Photos. Let's just drop it down. And there you go. Now let's long press on that and let's click on create stack. So what this is going to do is it's going to show you the widgets that could stack with this. Now I chose a two by two, so it has to be another two by two. It has to be able to fit. We could go to our gallery app. Let's just pick one. They're going to do two photo apps and click on that and click on add. Now we have a stacked widget, which I can then swipe through. If you long press on it, you can edit the stack, change what order they're in, or add another one. Now you can see on my home screen how I'm using it. I have my upcoming events, but then I have my full calendar. Sometimes I like to just have the calendar. Sometimes I want to see a longer view of what's coming up. And you can do all sorts of cool things with this. I really, really love this feature. This is one a lot of people just don't realize is there. If you go into your settings, go to security and privacy, look down here for secure folder. Keep your personal files and apps safe and secure. Let's go in and actually set this up. Maintain your privacy, enhance your productivity, add second instances of your apps so you can use them in different contexts. There's a lot of potential usefulness here. Let's click on continue and there's some permissions that we're going to need to give up. At this point, you can go in, set a pin, a pattern, a password, or whatever you want to use to secure this folder. So what you end up with now is a folder that you'll actually see if we go back here. Let's go and just go into my app drawer here and we should see secure folder right here now. We click on this, it's unlocked currently, so we can go straight into it, but you can move files over, so photos, videos, whatever it might be that you're trying to keep secured. There's even a calendar, a web browser, but you can also add your own apps in and it will actually create its own instance. So let's go, let's just grab TikTok because that makes some sense. Add that in and now let's launch it and it should launch TikTok as if it's the first time I've ever used it as you can see here. So this is its own instance. It's not just my same TikTok app, it's a brand new one separate from the one that is already on the device. If you wanna get rid of an app, you have to long press on it and hit select and then click on hide. And you can imagine all sorts of uses for this yourself whenever you're done. Click on the little three dots up there, hit lock and exit. You can see it before I go, add files, customize. You can kind of change some colors and do some interesting things with it. Change the name of it if you want to actually hide what it even is. So no one looks at your phone and even sees that there's a secure folder. Click on that lock and exit. And then the next time you go into it, it's going to ask you for that pin before it will give you access. And it's showing me the pin here. It's blacked out for you. This next one I'm fairly sure is already pre-installed, but if it's not, go to the, the Galaxy Store and you should find it. It's called Reminder. And you might think to yourself, what good is a, a Reminder app? There's not surely not much you can do with this, but there's at least one thing that I think is really, really cool because it solves one really obvious problem. Reminders are great, but you have to look at them when you're in the appropriate place and time to actually do the thing you need to be reminded to do. But with this, you can set a reminder for a location. So let's click on the little plus button down here and let's type in the memo by groceries. And now we're gonna add a place. Now you have to give it location permission all the time. So let's click on that. Let's click on location, allow all the time and make sure use precise location is enabled. And now we should be able to go back. And now let's pick a place. We're gonna scroll down here. We're gonna long press there on Kroger's and I'm gonna say when I arrive at, and you can actually set the radius, when I leave, when I, whatever you wanna do. It's really, really useful. Click on done. And then whenever I get there, 
I'm going to get a notification saying to buy groceries. Now, granted, why would I be at Kroger's if I'm not buying groceries? But you can put something more specific on there than that. This is really, really handy. This next one, I might have to blur some more stuff on as well because it is the Smart Things app. So if you scroll down and you click on Device Control, look for, make sure you're, you can toggle between Home and Smart Things, right? So let's make sure we're on Smart Things. And you're going to see, first off, a lot of your personal devices, things that you have paired Bluetooth to your device. Some of them may be highlighted. Some of them may not be. If they're connected, there's my watch. Okay, but there's other things you can get. For instance, you can have a little nifty thing on your keychain, which I do have on mine, which is a really handy tracker. And you can see here where my keychain is. So let's click on this and you will see that it is connected. You can actually ring it by clicking that button. It does a nice little chime to let you know where this thing is. You can actually change the buttons that when you press, you can squeeze it and it's there's a button in there, what it might do, see the battery life. And then I think most importantly, like I said, view a map and see exactly where that thing is and where, whatever it's attached to, where it is as well. Now, my understanding of this is it works in a really similar way to Apple's Find My Network. Basically, my phone is near my keys right now, and so my phone is keeping up with this. It's like, hey, I can see your keychain, and I know where I am, therefore I know where the keychain is. Now, if I leave, right, and I leave my keys behind somehow, it's going to know that the last place I saw those keys was at this location. And just like with Apple, when other Samsung devices are nearby, they will be able to detect your little smart tag or whatever it might be and update that location. Now, they don't know that they're doing this necessarily, but it's going to be happening in the background just like it does with Apple. Now, this actually works with my Buds 2 Pros as well. I can see the case and also each individual earbud. So if I lose a bud somewhere, my phone's going to be able to tell me where I was last time I was near. And if somebody stole it, well, maybe if there's a Samsung phone nearby, which there likely is, I'm going to know where that bud is going. All of this makes for, you know, some really good reason if you own a Samsung device to buy more Samsung devices, right? Go buy one of their smart things trackers, buy some earbuds that have this ability. And it's something that's just really useful to take advantage of. Now, the last one is one that I am guilty of not taking advantage of. I think a lot of us now just use Google Photos as their default photo app because it's got the ability to back things up and it's just really convenient. But the gallery app that Samsung has is probably worth looking at. There are some really nice features in this application. So let's click on the edit button first and we'll see what we can do here. So obviously you can do cool stuff like rotating the image and all of that standard editing stuff. You've got filters, you've got the ability to balance things out to change, you know, uh, sharpness, color, temperature, all these things. You've got the ability to draw on top of the image stickers and text, but you've also got more down here in this bottom corner. You have object eraser. Let's see if we can get rid of a painting up here on the wall. Oops, did not mean to do that. Got a two finger swipe. Let's just draw kind of around it. It should grab it and let's click on erase and it's pretty much gone. Let's get rid of that last little bit there and it's gone. The painting's gone. So that object eraser is very, very strong and it's actually intelligent. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Let's erase rows and now we just have uh, nothing on the couch. It's an intelligent eraser on top of it. You can just, for the most part, you can just tap things and it's going to try and intelligently decide what you're trying to get rid of. As you can see there, sometimes it's better than others when it's something that's more in the foreground, that's going to be a bit easier. But that object eraser is really good and it's honestly right on par with what Google has with the magic eraser. But there's more than just this. You can also erase shadows and erase reflections, which we'll try to demo here. Let's go to object eraser and let's click on erase reflections. Let's see if it's able to do a whole lot with this image. And yeah, it definitely did. They're not totally gone, right? Like it didn't just absolutely delete all the reflections, but it definitely got rid of a lot of it. But there's even more, right? There's even something called spot color. Everything goes black and white. You pick a color, which unfortunately she is the same color as my couch. So the couch is going to get its color back. But you see what I mean? There's some really cool stuff you can do here. It black and whited out the the, uh, the blanket behind her. And then you can go in and erase the color out of other things if you want to really try and dial that in. You can change the hue of the image itself. You can resize, which is something that I use with some regularity because some places don't let you upload full resolution images because the file is too large. You can do that right inside the gallery app. 
So like I said, a lot of people are probably not using the gallery app anymore, but maybe you should be. Maybe you should check it out for that object eraser, for spot color, for some of the filters. There's some really good stuff in there to be had. Guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button on your way out so that you don't miss more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.